Hello and welcome to a new video. I'm sorry I didn't do a video like this last month. I forgot. Simply forgot. Because I was in the middle of preparing Owen's birthday and it was the end of school and all that and my mind was just busy with other stuff and I realized when I was going to do this one, oh I never did one last, last month. So here it is, the big roundup of what happened in the last three months. Usually I would share some some products that I've liked and um, maybe sometimes stuff I didn't like but to be honest I couldn't think of much because I haven't tried many new things um, and some of the stuff I only recently started to try so I want to try them a bit longer before I tell you about them so there's just one product which is this it's the Pure Derm Exfoliating Foot Mask I used to do for the past two three years I've been using a, a similar product from Dr. Kimoto it's uh, basically socks you put on and it has uh, fruit, as uh, fruit acids in it. It doesn't burn your skin technically but what it does is that it speeds up the cell renewal into the deeper layer of the skin and it makes the outer layer that is dead skin peel off your feet. You probably have seen there are more and more now coming videos on social media where you see somebody using them and peeling all the skin of their feet. For me it doesn't work exactly like that but um, effectively all the skin ends up coming off. Um, not as nicely, I don't have baby feet like the lady underneath, but I walk bare feet everywhere, so my feet are dead. <laughs> but it does still make them look nice. Um, the reason why I just want to show you this one is because I used to use the Dr. Kimoto one, which is very, very good. I have nothing against it. It costs £12 for like a one use. Sorry, I just saw a delivery van and I'm waiting on a delivery, but that wasn't me. This one costs £6 on Amazon and uh, to me it gave me even a quicker result. Uh, it started to peel off about a week later when the Dr. Kimoto one can... No, a few days actually, I've been there four or five days this one. Dr. Kimoto one can take a week up to 10 days sometimes to start peeling off. Now this will vary from person to person depending on how your skin is, but in my case that's the case. So this one is only half the price, so from now on I might just go for this one because it just gives me the same result for half the price. So this was my one product of the month. Um, and then I'm going to give you an update per person in our family because it's the best way to to talk about this. There's been a lot of things happening for all of us lately. Most of them, well actually pretty much all of them, are extremely positive and make us feel very um, excited about what's to come in the next year. When I say year it's because I see September as the start of a new year. I still think in school years in my head. Uh, I do feel like September is more of a start over time or yeah, new start more than January in my head. That's just the way it's always been because I've been used to school years and I haven't been to school in over 10 years, 10 years. But I still think like that because now my children go to school, so yeah. <coughs> anyway, so I start with the boys. Alfie, I'll just do it from the, I guess it's not, I'll keep myself for last, just to be polite. <laughs> But uh, so Alfie, Alfie started to talk um, more and more, which is great. Um, he does officially have a speech delay, but we all know that it is due to the fact that he's bilingual and Owen was delayed too. Um, he has been assessed by the, um, by the health visitor and referred to speech therapy for later on. The waiting list are so long, she preferred to refer him now so then he would have access to it whenever he starts school. Um, but he's starting to repeat a lot of things, very cute, he's calling Owen by his name and all that, so it's very, very nice. And apart from that, he has just grown so much. He is going from being a little, a big baby to a proper little boy and it's cute and I, I'm really excited. I do love the um, that stage of their, their, I mean it's a complicated age, but... I do love it when they start to talk and you can start to communicate with them and that it's very cute. And uh, he will be starting, he got a place to start the Sure Start program which is a bit like a little uh, preschool where he will be going from September three mornings a week uh, which is great because it's going to free up some time for me to work and uh, it would be great for him to socialize with other children without me being there. I do bring him to a lot of activities, but I'm always there and I feel it's very different. 
uh, when the parents are there and when they are not. So um, I'm very excited for him. And he's also starting rugby tots, which is so exciting. So I'll be going with him on Friday afternoons um, to rugby tots, which if you don't know, it's like a little rugby club and it starts from two years old. So in his group, there will be two to three and a half years old. And it's quite exciting. The, for the little ones like this, the parents are participating uh, in helping them to do the things. And then in the next class, which is from three and a half to five years old, then you're there, but they are starting to do things on their own. So it's great. So that's uh, for Alfie. For Owen, quite a lot happened. He turned six and he had a great birthday and he finally got the Hachimol he's been wanting since Christmas. And um, he has been to summer scheme. He is going to be continuing dancing and uh, he will be starting swimming classes as well. Probably not in September, he's on the waiting list, on the reserve list for September, but more than likely in November. And um, he is going in primary two, which is the second year of uh, primary school in Northern Ireland. I know in England it's a bit different, but um, yeah, that's how it is here. Uh, and um, he's just had chicken pox, which is brilliant when you're about to go on holidays. Uh, I'm glad that it's going to be over and done with, feeling a bit sorry for him about how itchy he is right now and just knowing that we're going to go to France and Alfie is more than likely going to get it while we're there. So we're going prepared, we have everything we need and at least they can start the school year having uh, being over and done with with chicken box and if Alfie doesn't get it, I'm sure he will get it at some point anyway. But for Owen it will be done. And I think that's, yeah, that's about it for Owen's news, uh, which is all good. Then James, uh, so a lot of updates from James, all very good or positive or giving us a lot of hopes. Um, in case you didn't know, James had cancer in 20, he was diagnosed in December 2014. Uh, he had the whole treatment in 2015. And since then, uh, he's been trying to recover from it because it does take a long time. He still suffers from a lot, a lot, a lot of side effects from the chemo. Chemo is an amazing thing something I never even myself realized before James had the treatment is how much it damages some very good stuff in your body. James was unlucky, he had an allergic reaction to the chemo drugs and it attacked his nervous system so he has a lot of nervous issues and we have finally seen a neurologist who is going to help him to try and recover some of the things some of the stuff he's been told that this is just going to be the way it is because there's nothing they can do about it but at least some of them can be they can try and improve them but i think the most important thing is that even if he was told for some of them we can't help you because it's there's too much damage done the good thing is that uh, somebody listened and somebody acknowledged the fact that he actually had those things they are all invisible issues and it's very hard to convince doctors sometimes when they can't physically see a problem uh, or that it's happening, especially when it's not a problem you control and you can't make it happen. And it's just, especially with nerves, it just randomly happens. And it usually happens at times when the doctor is not opened. So they've done, they've run a lot of tests to try and identify what is causing the issue exactly and all that. And um, there are, yeah, he's undergoing assessment basically to try and get, not a maybe not a treatment, but things that can help him on a daily basis so that's really good he also had a lot a lot a lot of scans and blood tests and all that which are just normal because for 12 years um for 12 years after he got the all clear he will be under surveillance he's considered in remission he won't be considered cured until it's been 12 years that he had the all clear and it's now one i will be almost two years so 10 years to go yay <laughs> but uh it's good in a way because they keep a close eye on him so in, if anything was to come back um they can catch it really early and treat it instead of it going unnoticed and all that so he had a lot of scans and everything is completely all clear normal very good so we can go on our holidays knowing that everybody is good Moving on to me, I'll try to make it brief for a lot of those things because a lot has happened. Um, I, I I came to a conclusion about a lot of things and I've decided to make some changes about a lot of things in my life. 
So the first thing is I started a new treatment for my bowel issues. I will not go into details about what the treatment is about yet because same again, I will definitely be making a video because I think, I, to me, this is what's happened. Whenever I was offered this treatment, uh, it freaked me out a little bit, but I went online and I tried to find videos of people who were around my age or even my, even up to, you know, under 50, let's say, that were dealing with bowel issues um, like I have and that were be willing to share about how the treatment went for them. And I can find extremely little there. And I was facing that situation when I got my gastric bound. Now there's a lot more people who have one, so there's a lot more people talking about it. But I feel like it has to start somewhere and I do want to, if I can help one person by making a video explaining what I go through daily, even if it's probably going to be a TMI video for a lot of people, I will put a lot of warnings <laughs> if people don't want to know about that. Um, do you feel like this can help people? Because if it wasn't for one doctor who was actually my physio trying to help me and explore that option as a treatment, for me, I would never have ha had it offered. I have seen a lot of specialists for this and most of them have said to me, there's no treatment for it, you just need to treat the symptoms and that's it. But I suffer from an illness who makes me housebound a lot of the time when it flares up, which is not nice when you're 32 and you have two young children and you want to go and not have anxiety about going away somewhere where there's, there might not be toilets near you and all that. So. Um, it has brought me a lot of good things to to be able to meet with a doctor who's willing to help me. So I was referred to the physio um, in December following some issues I had after our birth. Um, and I will also talk about all this in that I will make a big explanation video when I'm ready and I've tried more things. I have more concrete results I can give people. Uh, but Anyway, that physio has been gone, she's gone beyond her duty as a physio to deal with one issue, to try and sort out a lot of other issues that have a massive impact on my life. Um, she was uh, doing like a full checkup at the first appointment and whenever I told her how um, my bowel issues were affecting my life, she said to me, you're too young, you cannot live like this, there's no, no way, uh, there's bound to be solutions or things to try and all that. And she didn't tell me, but between that appointment and the next one, she basically did a whole lot of research to try and help me. And she put me in contact with a nurse who is now um, the nurse who is supervising my treatment. And these ladies have potentially changed my life. Um, I started the treatment now six weeks ago. And it takes, it takes about 10 to 12 weeks to know exactly if it's going to be something that will work. But so far, the, <laughs> the difference it has made in my daily life is absolutely amazing. Um, it's not perfect. It's not, I don't, I still don't have bowels who function like a normal person. But I know I probably will never have that. But at least it means I can have my life back. And this is priceless. And this has been something that makes me so... Um, I can now start to think of things that I never thought I could do because of this and now I can actually think oh I can do this or that and oh I'm being <laughs> it makes me feel a bit emotional because it's amazing the difference it makes in my life so this has been the biggest change in my life this this summer so far and um I think because of that it has given me the confidence to make some decisions I have been Kind of wanting to take uh, for a while and I couldn't because I felt I felt like I didn't know where I wanted to go. I knew I didn't want to be where I was but I didn't know where I wanted to go and this has made me think a lot about oh, okay now that I can do a lot more things what do you want to do? So this is the changes that have now started and are going to be happening. So um, job wise <coughs> I was a registered childminder for a long time and then James got sick and um, I had to take care of him. I was on maternity leave at the time but after it was over I could not mentally go back to childminding. I suffered mentally massively from the whole thing. I still have extreme anxiety at times. Um, it's been a massive uh, trauma for me, the whole, the whole situation. 
and uh, I didn't feel like I could give um, I'm a perfectionist let's say and to me childcare is something that I don't take lightly uh, if I offer a childcare service I want to do it up to the standard that I know is the best and I'm in a position where I don't feel like I can I could in the way when I was minding a friend's child like after school an older one that was absolutely fine but I could not offer that care to a lot large number of children or to very young children to the standard I want and to be honest it's not really what I want to do right now I don't think it's the best job that fits around my family it would be very tricky as well because I have a lot of medical appointments so does James and I have to drive him there so um it's just not a job that fits around our family very well at the minute I'm not saying I will never go back to it I don't know I it's a possibility but for now I have officially made the decision to uh, give up my registration um, what happens is that every year when you're a child minor you get inspected by the health trust and there's a social worker coming to your house when you're minding the children looking at how you work they look through all your paperwork make sure everything is in check and you also need <coughs> excuse me you need to have there are three um, diplomas you need to, ha to hold to be able to be a registered child minder there is a safeguarding one there is um, uh, um, health and safety one and there is a pediatric first aid course all those courses are only valid for three years after which you need a refresher course because especially for things like first aid a lot of things change for safeguarding and health and safety the rules change all the time so it's just to have up-to-date information and to make sure to be honest the first aid I have done the first pediatric first aid five times in my life I'm 32 and um, I would know the like first aid moves and all that but every time I've done it some of the um, guidelines for treating different things were completely different and some of the things they told us oh you do this in like in case of a nosebleed for example <laughs> the guidelines change and they go from do this to absolutely do not do what we told you to do 10 years ago so they are constantly updated and it's so important because science is evolving and well you know I'm not going to ramble too long about this anyway the bottom line is each of these course costs 70 pounds to do to be able to do my registration I need to have the inspection but I also need to do those courses mine are not out of date so before I can mine children I would need to pay 210 pounds in courses to be able to start the process to re-register if I want to do this is exactly the same I need to fill in obviously a lot more paperwork for the registration and I need to have a more in-depth inspection and also an interview to make sure I'm mentally capable of doing it and all that and that I'm doing it for the right reasons and all but I've been through it and this is not it's not a big load of things uh, it's, it's very similar to what you have to do for the inspection and I thought if I, I'm going to pay for these courses and every year I'm going to have to have an inspection despite not mining in children so I'm still going to have to do all the paperwork and all that but um, I'm not even sure in the next three years I'm going to mine in children and I'm probably going to end up spending all this money for nothing so I'd rather give up my registration and if I want to go back to this then start it again and then put the money into something like invest it into something I know I'm going to continue so I have sent my certificate back and I'm officially deregistered as a child minder and I know it doesn't technically make a difference because I wasn't doing the job but I think this was actually holding me back quite a lot to put myself fully into my two businesses which is the sewing business and the sticker business I love these I have been struggling to go back to the sewing because it's part of the old me I kind of see myself as the old me of before cancer and the new me of after cancer the stickers is something that has pulled me through after the cancer so um, it's something I love doing and it's something that fits around my family life a lot but I do miss sewing a lot and I want to go back to it more I've only made a few orders um, recently since I started again but uh, from September I want to start making more stuff again because I love it um, so I'm really excited about September because when I come back from my holidays I can fully put myself into this without having in the back of my head oh but you're a child minder this is going to waste no it's not because I'm not a child minder anymore now my two jobs are 
I don't know what to call myself every time people are saying, what do you do? I make cushions and stickers. Like, do you think I'm being taken seriously, especially for official stuff? So I'm a business owner. This is what, this is what my job title actually is. I'm a business owner and I need to see it seriously if I want people to take me seriously about it. So yes, that's what I do and it's working well and I want it to continue and I want to grow it and I want to have more time to do it. So I'm gonna put a lot of energy and time and effort into it because I want this to work and it makes me very happy. Then the last but not least thing is the vlogging and how messed up the schedule has been over the past couple of months. I did warn you that with the school holidays I couldn't promise anything but I feel the need to explain to you what has happened in my mind and how I'm planning to do things um, in the new year, in September, in the new school year. So, um, <clears throat> lately, well lately, let's say in June, in June I started to feel not fed up with vlogging but like vlogging was taking over too much of my not taking over it's very it's very very hard to explain when you're vlogging because you want to capture the exciting moment of your life to for them to be in the vlog you live all these moments through a camera it's not like if you have somebody else filming those moments you are literally holding that camera to make sure you capture these so you have them on film and you end up not actually living them when they are happening and i was not aware of this I became aware of this, I think it was around around Owen's birthday actually, like on the lead up to Owen's birthday. Um, I didn't want, I feel like I didn't want to miss out on that, uh, so the vlog was a lot, I vlogged, I vlogged a lot less and I filmed a lot less what I, what I was planning to do, but in the end it showed me how even with those tiny moments, all the feelings that you actually lived that day, you only need those tiny snippets to remember them because they are in in your head not on the film and i think it took that for me to realize that and also i um i don't want it's not a, i don't i don't know how to explain this properly i felt i was at a point where i felt like i had to vlog instead of i wanted to vlog and i don't ever want it to be that because i'm not planning to make a living out of this um I primarily do this for us and um, but I know now that more people watch the vlog still a very tiny amount compared to some other people but you know there are a lot of people that are telling me they watch the vlog every single day and most of these are people I don't know but I know myself that when I like to watch vlogs I don't want them to stop and I like when there's a schedule and all that so I'm very aware of these things as a viewer and I want to provide these for the for the people who are watching mine but it was getting to a point where I, I was so focused on that that I was forgetting to have fun doing it and I didn't like that anymore. So, sorry I have hiccups. Another thing was that, oh, sorry this video is going to be very long but it's important to explain it. I um, was always thinking I need to have roughly 15 minutes of footage a day. So whenever there was a day where there was nothing happening i would ramble about random things to make up those 15 minutes thinking oh i need a few more minutes so i'm gonna add just a little thing or sometimes i would want to vlog longer than those 15 minutes and i would feel like oh i can't do this it's gonna to be too long and so i was restricting myself too much and i don't want to do this anymore the camera cut off on me i have no idea when and i'm hoping it's not too long ago but i only noticed now so uh, what I've been doing is to I've been vlogging whenever I felt like it so I don't I used to carry my camera around with me constantly wherever I was going but by that I mean from the living room to the kitchen to the office to the kitchen to, now I don't do that anymore what I do is that there are some times in the day where I'm going to give you a general update with things and show you some things and then I would put the camera down somewhere and only go to it when I have something worth vlogging let's say <laughs> to know uh, and i don't focus on the minutes in the vlog anymore i just vlog and when it comes to editing i edit and i cut off the vlog in the week at the 
when I have enough footage for one vlog. So some vlogs will have one day, some vlogs will have half a day maybe sometimes, I don't know. Some vlogs will have a full week, some vlogs two days. It's gonna be, you know, it's a bit random, but at least I feel entirely happy that what I have vlogged, I wanted to vlog and it's things I want to have there. So I hope this makes sense, but anyway. The one thing I still need to work out is um, which day I will be uploading the vlogs. I am uh, aiming to go back to do one weekly video uh, every week, but I'm gonna have to see, you know, how that goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I would love to do a weekly video again. There will be for, sh for sure be one every other week. And for the vlogs, I'm probably gonna upload them twice a week. So let's say, I have film footage for a full week and you might have at the end of that week then on the Monday, let's say I upload on the Monday and the Thursday, uh, you would have on the Monday maybe Monday and Tuesday of the previous week and then all the rest in another vlog or sometimes you may have one day and then the rest. Or, so there might be more delay between when things happened and when things were uploaded or sometimes maybe the same day depending on how I cut it. But uh, this is what I'm planning to do. I do want to stick to a schedule because even for myself, I think it will be easier for me to stay organized about this. And um, yeah, I think it will be it will be better that way. So this is kind of all the updates I have for you. Uh, it is now uh, Saturday and we are going on Tuesday. So I am going to spend the whole weekend preparing the stuff to pack and cleaning, I'm, I'm hoping to clean my house before I leave, so when I come back I have a clean and tidy house. And um, in August you can expect to have some vlogs from France, obviously I will try and vlog um, as much as I can, but as for the uploading, until September, don't count on the schedule, I just upload and edit whenever I can. Uh, and uh, but I will be sharing stuff from France. I promise that's for sure um, And then when we come back, I will be filming like little hauls and Things of what we've bought and things like that in France. So I hope you are excited about this um, And yeah, also my little box video Unless it arrives by Monday Will not go up until uh, I'm back. So it's gonna be a late one this month but uh, I'll still do it because I love to do it. <laughs> and yes, so sorry it was a massive chunky video, but there was a lot of uh, important things I had to share with you. It was also not the usual roundup thing. Uh, it was a big massive update from everyone, but I hope you do uh, enjoy it anyway. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell button so then you get notified when I upload something new. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.